friends, I'm Sia from Florida. If you want to go on a safari with me, please like and subscribe. I was born into a loving family that treated me like a princess. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Living with them was a nightmare, because the apple of my parents' eye was my brother Danny. Okay, it might seem like I'm complaining a lot, but hang on to know why. Growing up, mom and dad were always busy with their jobs or would be fighting with each other. While my parents did that, I pretty much had to fend for myself, and that's why I learned to cook early on. But that made my brother demand me to fix him some snacks every time he was hungry. And I wasn't gonna be bossed around. Make yourself a sandwich, I'm not your nanny. Oh, talking back to your brother? Now face this. Saying that, Danny picked his nose and chased after me. Gross! My brother loved to tease me all the time. He would stick out his tongue at me, throw gum at me, and worse. It was like his life's mission was to annoy me. One time, I caught Danny stealing my trick-or-treat candies. I knew mom would go crazy if she found out about him eating too many candies because of his braces. So I did what every responsible sister does. I blackmailed him. I will keep my lips zipped if you let me have the PlayStation for the entire month. Do we have a deal? Deal? <laughs> In your dreams. I'll just say you're lying. Easy peasy. Oh, that made me so mad. Just then, I noticed his piggy bank on the desk and grabbed it. But Danny tried to snatch it from me, and in doing so, it fell and broke. Mom and Dad came running and were pretty pissed at what I'd done. You are always bothering your brother. But Mom, no buts. Grandma gifted him this piggy bank on his test result day. And look what you did. I am so disappointed. The school wasn't any different. Although Danny was a year older than me, we went to the same class and he was the star kid according to the teachers. One time we were having our fifth grade English exam and I was so tense because I hadn't studied. But when I saw Danny, the guy was writing like he was some scholar. So I focused on my question paper and answered it as best as I could. But when the results came, I was called to the principal's office and mom was also there. Why, oh why? Care to tell us what you were thinking when you wrote a song in an English exam? Under my umbrella? Really? Um, because we had to write a poem about an umbrella. Songs are also poems, aren't they? That really got the teacher angry. And the look mom gave me made me want to hide my head in a hole like an ostrich. When I returned to the class, everyone was laughing at me and singing that song. Dumbhead. I knew you would fail the subject, but failing so epically? It's so hilarious. I overheard the conversation, and I couldn't help but share it with everyone. I so wanted to rip him to shreds, but instead, I just cried and promised myself to get even with him. So the next day at home, I wore his favorite hoodie and paraded in front of him while he was busy playing on his PlayStation. Ugh, this looks so nice on me. What do you say? The moment Danny saw me, he chased me, and I ran around the coffee table and took the PlayStation controller. He came charging at me like a bull and pushed me onto the couch but I just kept screaming louder even though I wasn't hurt. Oh God, mom, dad, he smacked me, ah! You liar, dad, she's totally lying. I didn't touch her. My parents believed me and grounded him for an entire weekend. Finally, I felt happy. As time passed, our bickering didn't seem to stop. When we reached high school, I went on a date with the coolest guy in my class and Danny showed up. I was furious. What are you doing here? Would you mind giving us some space? Oh, you want some space? I'll give you that. Saying that, he pushed the guy off the bench and made him run off. I was so mad at him. I wanted to break his teeth. But when he showed me his phone, my jaw dropped. The guy was two-timing me. What the heck? I am such an idiot. Yeah, you sort of are. And that's why you're a jerk magnet. Ugh, Danny was so annoying. But I guess perhaps he wasn't all that bad. After that day, he was at least bearable. Things were good, but after I graduated high school, things went south for our family when dad left us for his girlfriend. Those were the hardest days for us. Mom was sad and we could barely make ends meet. I knew Danny and I couldn't afford college. It was then that for the first time, Danny and I landed on the same page and decided to find work so we could help mom. Danny found a job in just one month, while my search felt like it took an eternity. After a long time, Luckily, I got a job in a salon. I was so excited about my first day at work that I woke up at six in the morning. But when I went there, the owner handed me the scissors. I felt scared. I might have lied on my CV about knowing how to style hair cause once or twice I gave Danny a bowl cut. 
Just trim the hair and make it even. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Don't worry. You're in good hands. After I was done, I was so sure the client would love it. But she screamed. You ruined my hair. Are you crazy? What? No, it looks good. What happened next wasn't a surprise. I was fired and banned from working at any salon ever. Um, to set the record straight, that hairstyle is totally in fashion these days. After losing that job, I was a bit disappointed, and one day, I was just lazing around the house, Danny came over to me. Hey, couch potato, what do you have planned for mom's birthday? Oh, it just slipped my mind. How about I cook the food and you take care of the rest? The party we threw was awesome. When it was time for dinner, everyone praised my cooking skills. Mom and all the guests loved the food. Oh, yum. Honey, you made snacks and a whole Italian meal? I'll give you 10 out of 10. I never had time to cook these fancy things for you. Where did you learn this from? Really? Yay. Mom, I learned it from YouTube and sort of gave my own touch to the recipes. It was the first time I'd felt so happy in a while. Come on, it's just food. What's the big deal? Anyone can cook. Really? Then you won't mind ordering food for yourself, will you? Okay, okay, I was just kidding. I must say that it's good. But please, don't be one of those people who constantly puts their food pics on Instagram. For the first time in years, Danny had a good point. So, I did the opposite of what he said and made a Facebook page and an Instagram account where I posted pictures of everything I cooked. One day, I got a call from a lady who was at mom's party. She told me she wanted me to cook for her son's birthday. OMG, are you serious? Um, I mean, thanks a lot. I'm glad you liked my cooking that much. It was something new, but I gave it my best shot, and the whole thing turned out great. It was a couple of weeks later that I found out that she was some big-time influencer who reviewed my food on her Instagram account. And because of that, I started getting orders for my food. While I focused on my home business, I hoped that one day I'd have my own restaurant. Meanwhile, Danny got married to a girl way out of his league. Back in high school, Kyla used to be the most popular girl and was always mean to me for some reason. But since she and Danny soon moved out and I got his huge room, I was ecstatic. Things were going great until I was scammed by a customer. He gave me a big order, didn't pay me, and worse, vanished. It was a big loss for me. Even though I was getting orders, I didn't have much to buy ingredients. So reluctantly, I asked Danny for a loan and promised to pay him back. But the moment his wife heard me, her face twisted. What? No, we don't even have enough to pay our bills. Why don't you look for a job? You'll definitely get one. It's been long enough since you've been sitting at home, and it's not like your cooking is so perfect. Thank you so much, Kylie. Next time I want unwanted advice, I know where to go. Danny, I'm talking to you. I waited for Danny to respond, but he said nothing. So I just left out of embarrassment. Sometime later, there was a hurricane in our town, and the roof of Danny's house collapsed, so he had no choice but to move in with us. I was fine with it, but one day, Danny's wife demanded that I give him his room back. While I was totally against it, Mom kept nagging about it, and I had had enough. No, Mom, it's mine now. He left, remember? See ya. Don't talk to her that way. I'd never talk to you like that, Mom. If I wanted to hear from a butt, I'd fart. Do not butt in next time. That really had pissed her off. But in the end, I had to do what mom asked me to do. While Danny and his wife were at our place, it was getting harder and harder to stay at home. I decided to look for jobs again, and I interviewed for many jobs at restaurants, thinking my experience as a home cook would help, but it didn't. After another unsuccessful interview, I was in the elevator when someone tapped on my shoulder. Oh my God, it's really you. You're Sia. I followed your Instagram account. I'm a regular customer. A fan, probably. Creepy? Um, okay. Just as the elevator stopped, I wanted to run, but what the guy said made me stop. Hey, look, I'm Carter. Um, I run an event management company, and we are looking for someone who can make food for our events. I know you must be busy, but maybe think about it. Okay, uh, I'll let you know. The moment I was home, I called Carter and landed the contract. I was jumping with joy. I put my all in and the event went amazingly. Soon, I started to work with Carter more often. Carter and I had amazing chemistry. And every time he was around, I would be giggling at his jokes. We soon started dating and a couple of months later, he proposed to me. And I said yes. 
The very next day, I invited Carter to meet my family, but what happened next shook me. The moment Carter entered the house, Danny's wife started acting weird. Carter? Ah, oh, it's nice to see you after a long time. I missed you. Did you miss me? Please, don't flatter yourself, Kylie. What is she talking about? Wait a minute, do you two know each other? Turns out, Carter and Kylie had dated a long time ago, until he found out she was cheating on him and then dumped her. Wow, talk about a small world. Well, when Danny learned this, he was bent on having me break things up with Carter. Do you think it's that easy? If so, why don't you leave Kylie? I love him a lot. I can't just leave him. Danny just got so angry. Carter and I got married a month later. Danny and Kylie didn't attend the wedding, and that was fine with me. Soon we both moved to another city where we were living our best life. One time, I called mom and she told me how Kylie was sick, so Danny was struggling to meet expenses. I felt sad and just wished things would turn out well for him. As for my work, it only got better and better, and my dream to one day have my own restaurant was soon going to be a reality. I so wanted to share this with mom, so I visited her, but to my shock, Danny and Kylie were also there. I hadn't seen them since I left the city with Carter. I was surprised to see that Kylie was expecting, and I was so happy for them. Even though Kylie gave me the cold shoulder, I put on a smile and greeted her. As we were having lunch, mom asked me how I was doing, and I told her all about my plans of expanding the business. I'm now gonna buy a place for my own restaurant. I'm so nervous, but also excited because I worked so hard for this. <laughs> Show off. Everyone knows you have a rich husband and can afford anything. So what hard work? <laughs> Her words really pissed me off. Jealousy is a disease, honey. I hope you get well soon. Jealous? Of you? Someone who left her mom the moment she got married? You are just like your dad. That did it. But before I could say anything, Danny snapped. Just cut it out. You have no idea. Just keep your mouth shut. You didn't even let me attend her wedding. She even... I kicked his leg under the table to stop him. Don't try and stop me, Sia. She needs to know about your kindness about how you helped us in our time of need. Kylie, Sia paid all your medical bills and even paid for the renovation of our house after the hurricane. I'm so sorry for all the times I picked on you and for being a bad brother. You helped us out despite all of this. I owe you big time. Saying that, Danny hugged me tightly. Kylie, if you love me, you gotta respect my family. Hearing all this, Kylie looked so shocked and stormed out. We stayed at my mom's place for a week and when it was time for us to go, Kylie entered my room and apologized. I am sorry, Sia. I thought about everything and I realized how wrong I was, how badly I treated you right from the start. You were so kind all the time. Well, I am glad you realized it. Maybe let's give our relationship another try. I am kind of thankful to you for taking my brother off our hands. Gosh, he can be so annoying. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Kylie, we're sister-in-laws by chance, but perhaps we can be friends by choice? What do you think? Oh, that's a pretty good idea. And I hope my daughter will grow up to be as strong and kind as you. One afternoon in 1890, Clarissa was sipping tea at a garden party, when suddenly a dog came running out of the bushes and tripped her. She fell flat on her back and screamed. Everyone rushed her inside quickly because Clarissa was heavily pregnant. An hour later, she gave birth to an adorable little girl. And that was me. Hi, I'm Agatha Christie, and this is my extraordinary story. Growing up, mom and dad spoiled me rotten because I was the youngest but they were so overprotective, they wouldn't even let me go play in the park. You'll get lost, sweetums. But I wanna see the ducks by the pond. Nasty ducks can bite your tiny fingers. Best to stay by our side. But there were no schools or kids my age in the neighborhood, and my parents wouldn't teach me how to read. You'll hurt your eyes, love. We'll teach you when you're a little older. Like when I'm five? How about eight? I hated waiting, so I began teaching myself. I started reading when I was four, and by the time I was eight, I had finished Alice in Wonderland. And I loved telling stories just as much. I didn't have any real friends, but my imaginary ones heard many of the tales I made up. I even had a poem published in the local newspaper when I was just 11. 
Life was good, but then everything suddenly changed. Dad fell ill and passed away, and a year later, my sister got married and my brother moved overseas. It was just me and my mom in our big house, and money was running out. I eventually wanted to get a job, but mom refused. You're a lady, Agatha. We don't take jobs. We get husbands who provide for us. I'm 15, and waiting for a husband sounds stupid. You're a gentleman's daughter, love, and you can only make money by marrying well. Mom sent me off to boarding school in Paris to learn music, and I thought this was my chance to make money by becoming a professional opera singer or a pianist. But after two years, I gave up that goal because it was quite obvious I just didn't have the talent. I went back to find mom looking weak, and it broke my heart that her life wasn't as good as before. One day we were out for a walk when we passed an antique shop, and mom stopped to admire a beautiful pearl brooch. Should we ask the price, mom? Sweetheart, I already know we can't afford it. Come, let's go. We'll be able to one day, I promise. I'm gonna get you that brooch. Soon after I turned 18, I came down with influenza, and the doctor strictly told me to stay in bed. Feeling bored and restless, I started writing again. Agatha, these stories are brilliant. You should get these published. I thought you didn't approve of working women. I didn't know you could write this well. You have a real talent. But every story got rejected, and I felt so frustrated. And mom was still obsessed with getting me married. I agreed to go to a dance just to make her happy. I thought I looked cute till I got there. Every girl was dressed like royalty. Just then, a snobbish-looking girl walked up to me. You, servant girl, why have you arrived so late? Go to the kitchen now and get more drinks for my friends. Excuse me? Get them yourself. How dare you speak to me like that? I'm Celeste Clearwater. Is that supposed to mean something to me? I'm Agatha Miller, and it was not a pleasure to meet you. Before she could reply, all the girls around us gasped and rushed towards the entrance, and Celeste followed. They were all drooling over a man in uniform who'd just arrived, and, well, I couldn't blame them. Oh my goodness, Archie is handsomer than ever. Isn't he dashing? I heard he flies planes with his eyes closed. <laughs> then he's not very good at it. Everyone turned to stare at me, including Archie. I was burning red with embarrassment, but he actually smiled. He walked past Celeste and came straight towards me. You're absolutely right. Now, let me guess your profession, writer. I'm trying to be one. How did you know? You have ink stains on your fingers. No need to be embarrassed. You're the first interesting person I've met at this dull party. So, tell me all about your writing. Over the next few weeks, Archie swept me off my feet. He was funny and charming, and he supported my passion. And three months later, we were engaged. But soon after, World War I broke out all over Europe, and Archie was called to the front. I was a nervous wreck worrying about him, and I decided I had to keep myself busy. So I joined the Red Cross. Caring for injured soldiers made me feel useful and even helped inspire ideas for writing. One Belgian officer in particular caught my attention. He had a head shaped like an egg and a magnificent walrus mustache. I could just picture him being the perfect detective in my stories, solving the hardest crimes. One day, I was carrying a pile of supplies when I accidentally spilled some water. A nurse came in at that moment, and before I could warn her, she slipped and fell hard on her butt. It was Celeste. You! You did that on purpose! It was obviously an accident. And what are you doing here anyway? Won't working with the poor ruin your nails? Ah, oh, and let you grab all the cute single officers? I don't think so. I'm engaged. Yes, I read about it in the papers. Trust me, it's not gonna last. Archie will come to a senses soon. Celeste, I believe you're suffering from jealousy, and I have just the cure for it. 20 cc's of penicillin in your butt. But Celeste was determined to make my life miserable. She spent all her time trying to get me fired instead of doing her actual job. She even started a nasty rumor about me. Agatha has a dirty past. She went to France when she was 15 because she got pregnant by some chimney sweep. So shameful. That's a dirty lie. I went to boarding school. And who will people believe? Me or a poor girl like you? Does Archie know about your past? I don't think he'll care anyway. I bet he's already found some beautiful European heiress. And he won't be coming back to you. You know what? Let's write to him and find out. I'll write to him right now. Dear Archie. No, that's too dry. 
my shining North Star. Though I indubitably trust you, a girl who claims to care for me deeply has warned me of your feckless heart. Although the girl in question is of limited intelligence, they do say mad crazy lunatics can say some wise deep things. What do you think, Celeste? Too flowery? But Celeste looked crazy with jealousy. She charged at me, but the head nurse came in just then and caught her red-handed. Celeste was fired for her outburst and all the mistakes she'd made at work. But her words made me worry even more. I hadn't heard from Archie in weeks, and checking the casualty lists was driving me insane. One foggy night, I was walking back home from work when I suddenly felt like I was being followed. Just as I was about to make a run for it, the figure caught me by my wrist, and I turned around and gasped. Archie! Oh my god, it's really you? Why didn't you reply to my letters or tell me you were coming? We don't always get our letters, love. And this was meant to be a surprise. Aren't you happy to see me? Of course I am. I was so worried something had happened to you, or you... <laughs> maybe you'd found someone else. What a silly idea. There's no one like you, Agatha. And I won't go back before I marry you and make you mine. And he kissed me deeply, and I felt like I was flying. We got married on Christmas Eve, and it was one of the happiest days of my life. Archie went back to the front, and I finally finished my novel. I sent it to every publisher I could think of, but it kept getting rejected. I was heavily pregnant and miserable. I was reading the newspaper one day, and seeing the list of bestseller books just made me angrier because all I had was a pile of rejection letters. I suddenly swept away a vase on the table, and it went crashing to the floor. A few minutes later, I bent down to pick up the mess, when suddenly, I felt a sharp pain through my body. The baby was coming. I gave birth to a beautiful girl, Rosalind, and she changed my life. I was so busy being a mother that I completely forgot about writing. Till one day, I was busy trying to wrestle Rosalind in the bath, when there was a knock at the door, and I found a man outside. Whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. I'm not selling anything, Mrs. Christie. I'm John Lane from Bodley Head. I wanted to buy the rights to your book to publish it. I couldn't believe it. Life completely changed after my first book was published. It was a hit, and money started pouring in. We were able to move to a better house, and on my next visit back home, I bought that antique pearl brooch Mom had once admired in the shop window. I kept writing novels like crazy, and my books were getting rave reviews. Everywhere I went, people wanted me to sign their copies. Excuse me, please tell us about your next book, Mrs. Christie. I don't want to give any spoilers, but you'll be on the edge of your seat. But slowly, my personal life was turning into a mess. Agatha, you got ink stains all over my handkerchiefs. It was an accident. I'll have them washed. Of course. The famous Agatha Christie can't be bothered to take care of the house or her daughter. She has a maid for all of that. Why are you being so mean? You loved this about me. You said you didn't want a dull wife. You're hardly a wife to me at all these days. We were fighting every day and things were getting worse, till one day I got the most <gasps> terrible news. Mom was really sick and I had to see her right away. But I was too late and I didn't get to say goodbye. Mom had been my biggest support and I was heartbroken. I was going through her things one day when Archie came downstairs looking serious, his bags packed. I want a divorce. I'm in love with someone else and I want to marry her. What? You're a heartless man, Archie. My mom just passed away and you want to humiliate me just because I'm more famous than you? You love your fame more than anything. You have no one to blame but yourself. And he just left. My mind refused to accept it. I was so upset. I packed my bags and went out for a drive. I didn't know where I was going. I just wanted to get away. And then I disappeared. When I opened my eyes, I was in a hotel room in Yorkshire and I had no idea how I'd gotten there. I saw some newspapers on the table and my jaw dropped in shock. My picture was plastered on the front pages with missing written on top. Apparently, the whole country had been looking for me for 11 days, trying to solve the mystery of my disappearance. But I had no memory of what had happened in all that time. What is the last thing you remember, Mrs. Christie? I remember being in my car and driving at night, and I was very upset. That's it. The doctor said I had a nervous breakdown that had washed my memory for those days. I was pale and weak, and many people thought I was faking my amnesia. 
I heard she did it to frame her poor husband for kidnapping. He left her, and who can blame him? I bet she was relaxing in some spa while the country spent so much money looking for her. Despicable. I was heartbroken, and my confidence was destroyed. I agreed to the divorce and decided to get away from everything. I hated leaving Rosalind behind with my sister, but I was too weak to take her along. I'm going to find the biggest candy in the world and bring it back for you. <laughs> get well soon, Mommy. I love you. I booked a ticket on the Orient Express and went in search of inspiration. I was in a hotel in Iraq waiting for the manager when someone dropped his bags on my toes. Ouch! I'm so sorry, Miss Christie. I was so shocked to see you here. My bags slipped from my hand. I'm such an idiot. Maybe you shouldn't read my books. You'll be so shocked you'll hurt yourself or others. <laughs> he laughed and I noticed he was very handsome, but much younger than me. I looked away. I was done with love and men, but he seemed eager to get to know me. And I found out he was an archaeologist named Max Malowen. He showed me around the country. One time, we were in the streets of Baghdad when we were surrounded by reporters. Miss Christie, are you going to write a murder mystery in Iraq? I'm on holiday, good folks, but I would love to write about your country someday. And who is your companion? I'm not important. You should ask Miss Christie when her new book will be out. I hear her typewriter clicking away at night. I was pleasantly surprised by how humble he was. Archie hated being less important than me, but Max shone more light on me. And slowly, I felt myself falling for him. But when we came back to the hotel, bad news was waiting for me. It's Rosalind, my daughter. She's seriously ill with pneumonia. I must leave right away. I felt my knees go weak, but Max quickly caught me. I'll come with you. I just couldn't lose Rosalind like my mother. I prayed we would make it back in time. But when we finally got to England, I was thrilled that Rosalind was out of danger. I spent the next few days entirely with Rosalind, but Max was always around to help with anything we needed. And one morning, I had a surprise waiting for me. I never thought I'd find someone who fits me like a missing puzzle piece. Agatha, I want to marry you. But you're 13 years younger than me, Max, and I don't care about that. The more I know, the more I admire you. Say yes and make me the happiest man alive. I was speechless, but I knew I loved him too. So I said yes, and six months later, we were married, and I never regretted it. My life became a happy whirlwind of writing mysteries, archaeological digs, and spending time with my daughter. My works were translated into 100 languages and are still widely read today. My stories were so popular, the Queen called me to present me with damehood for my contribution and services to literature. I'm Agatha Christie, and I never gave up on my dreams, and neither should you.